Thank you, Mr. President. KEI is a nonprofit organization that focuses on human rights and the public interest in the governance of knowledge. In July 2008, Dr. Manor Rest from KEI worked with uh, Mr. Chris Friend of the World Blind Union to convene an expert group to draft a proposed treaty. Since then, we have worked with the World Blind Union, other blind groups, non-blind NGOs, businesses, and negotiators from many countries who collectively overcame many political barriers to achieve this result. The road to Marrakesh has not been easy. It has taken five years. There were some disappointments along the way, such as a decision in 2001, or I should say, such as a decision in 2011 to eliminate deaf persons as beneficiaries, something that Helen Keller would have found appalling, and my mother is deaf would not understand. A huge coalition of very large businesses launched a last minute effort to block or weaken the treaty. It is also unfortunate that nearly all negotiators, uh, or rather, all negotiations on the text took place in secret. I mean, it was, I mean, it was off the record. We had access to the negotiating text, and when people talk about the transparency, what they mean is that the, the, the texts have been released on a regular basis, and we've had. Uh, a, considerable opportunities to be briefed by negotiators and discuss it and disseminate information to the public informally. And in that sense, I think people recognize that WIPO has really become the most transparent place there is to do norm setting in the intellectual property area. And I think people are really impressed with that and grateful for it, and we certainly are. But it is also the case that the records of the diplomatic conference will be very limited. There'll be very little information about country positions or the rationale for various articles. And I think that some of the reasons why some of the countries wanted the negotiations to be as secret as they were is because they didn't want to be publicly identified with taking positions that would narrow their rights and weaken the treaty as it regards the rights of blind people. That said, we are fortunate today that we have a text that provides a strong legal and political basis for copyright exceptions for persons with disabilities. And with all its flaws, WIPO is now the most transparent forum for intellectual property setting by far. As many delegates have already noted, this negotiation shows that when you publish the negotiating text, you can receive highly informative feedback and still reach an agreement. This treaty will vastly expand access to works, particularly among persons sharing a common language, such as English, Spanish, Arabic, and French, or persons who, le who read multiple languages, or persons living in other countries with different languages. Something that's, as we know, has become very commonplace throughout the world is Labor has become mobile across countries, and there's huge dysphoria around the world. My mother-in-law, uh, who lived with us, became blind. She was from France. She preferred to read in France. There was none of the libraries for the blind in the United States had any materials in, in, in French. Under this, under this treaty, if my mother-in-law was alive today, she would not have spent the last years of her life unable to read. The text addressed the most important barriers to access. While the text is complex in some areas, the treaty is truly user-friendly and not at all onerous as regards those who will use it to expand access to blind persons and other beneficiaries. This is the first treaty administered by WIPO that focuses on user rights, a point that many others have, have said uh, and mentioned be, uh, in their comments. And it's the first treaty at WIPO that focuses on the human right to participate in the cultural life of the community. The treaty provides for an article on the respect for privacy, the obligation to provide a legal path to circumvent technical locks on works. There's a recognition that exceptions should, must work across borders. 
and a recognition of the importance of general exceptions such as fair practices, dealings, or uses. We are pleased that country statements from India mentioned the need to overcome barriers from contracts and from Indonesia, there was a statement that the agreement included the content embedded in audiovisual works. It is difficult to comprehend why this treaty generated so much opposition from publishers and even from patent owners or why it took five years to achieve this result. As we celebrate and savor this moment, we should thank all those who resisted the constant calls to lower expectations and to accept an outcome far less important than what was achieved today. From everyone at KEI, we thank Francis Gurry, Ambassador Trevor Clark, Michelle Woods, and all of the WIPO staff. We thank all of the negotiators. We thank the Open Society Foundation, which supported work on this treaty for five years. David Hammerstein from Transatlantic Consumer Dialogue, who has been unable to attend today's sessions, and the many blind and non-blind civil society NGOs, libraries, and everyone else who worked so hard on this just cause. Thank you very much.